praise the Lord. Uh, I thank God because of this. It is a continuation of what we were talking about some minutes ago. So, uh, to walk with God, you must crucify the flesh. There is no option. If you are to walk with God, you must crucify, you must kill the flesh, you must kill the body. If you don't do so, the body will speak. It will speak and your soul will hear it more than your spirit. It is always strong. When your body speaks and your spirit speak, the soul tends to hear the flesh more than how it hears the spirit. Apostle Paul is saying that he kills his body daily. He kills his body daily. He crucifies the flesh daily. He beats his body, disciplines his body daily. He was crucified with Christ. You must crucify your body so that your soul remains to only listen to the flesh. When you have crucified the body, the soul will have no option but to listen only to the flesh, to the spirit. It works like a kidney. It just regulates, purifies. Praise the Lord. So make sure you kill the body. You must kill the body. The devil uses the body. That is why he puts the desires in the flesh. And the flesh will want things that the spirit is against. Those who are born of the flesh are flesh. Those who are born of the spirit are spirit. If you are born of the spirit, you are a spirit man. But if your body, your flesh is still speaking, your desire for the flesh, the desire for the things of the world, food, immorality, all those things, then your soul is going to be corrupted. It will listen to your spirit. It will listen to your body, your flesh, with those evil desires. And that is why the devil always puts desires in the flesh. The flesh is the enemy, the greatest enemy of the spirit. And the spirit is used by God. The body is used by the devil. If you crucify the flesh, the soul will have to listen to the spirit. The soul is a regulator. It's like a judge. One day when now you get yourself for the judgment, David, your soul will be judged. And if we had, had listened to the flesh, it will go to hell. Because most of the things that the flesh wants are, cut, uh, are castigated or are propagated by the devil. So if your spirit, if your soul listens to your flesh, you will go to hell. Sure. That it is judged. The weighing machine will show that what your body did that, that were contrary to the spirit was so many. And you will go to hell. The Bible says that if your eye causes you to sin then it will be better for you to cut it off and enter heaven with one eye how can your eye cause you to sin i thought it was your eye that was sinning listen to this i thought it was your eye that was sinning by seeing or doing those things but again, we are told, if your eye causes you to sin, so who is this you who is sinning, if it is not your eye? The eye is on the body. The eye is on the body. And the devil has a, put a spirit, an appetite for sexual immorality in this body. So this body wants to look at pornography. Pornography. So it will drive you to look at pornographic videos when you look at them your spirit is being corrupted you are listening now your spirit is being transformed you listen too much of this and from that it will uh, silence your spirit so we are told if your spirit if your if your eye causes you to sin that simply means if your body if your flesh causes you to sin if your flesh causes you to sin Cut it off. Kill it. Apostle Paul is saying, I crucify. I die daily. If your eye, which is part of your body, is seeing things that 
uh, against the spirit. Make sure you kill that desire in your in your flesh. Kill it. Crucify that desire. How can your eye cause you to sin? I thought it was your eye that was sinning. That is not the case. Sinning is done by your soul. It's done by something else. Your eyes has just facilitated how that sin is done. But something different is what is doing that sin. Listening, seeing that thing, internalizing it in your soul, mm, that is not the sin. By listening, the sin of disobedience. These men did not listen to God. They listened to this, uh, uh, the serpent. The sin of disobedience comes by through listening. I told you to do this, you did not do it. You did the contrary. You listened to another person. So disobedience comes with listening. And listening is part of the soul, mind, intuition, perception. Praise the Lord. Your eye will see. The eye is part of the body. Then, now you will start to imagine. That imagination is the sin. You have now seen something with your eye, and your eye is part of your body. And now you have started having thoughts, some unusual desires. Now those imaginations, those desires are coming from now, your soul, your mind, your heart, and the heart is part of the soul. In fact, the soul is hot set in the heart. Praise the Lord. So, that is why when I'm saying you sin by your soul, by seeing those, by imagining those things, we cannot sometimes stop you from seeing things. But when you start imagining these things, uh -uh. when you have now started imagining these things, you are now starting, imagination is in the soul. Your soul is now sinning. It does not know your eye. You cannot close your eyes or some things. You can look for it by a mistake. But what sins? Your soul. But now you start imagining it. You see how the devil entered uh, David and used the body, the eyes of David. He was, he was on the top of the roof. And that something just told him to look on the other side and saw Bathsheba bathing. And when the eyes saw Bathsheba bathing, the body began to boil. The blood in David began to boil. And immediately, the thoughts of how to arrange and sleep with Bathsheba came into his mind. The soul now. You see now the soul is sinning. Yes, now that is the soul sinning. He arranged and arranged and arranged and they slept. He brought back uh, Uriah so that they can sleep with Bathsheba so that all those that transpired did not. But Beth uh, Uriah was uh, just Uriah. He had planned and programmed and killed Uriah. It was part of the soul now sinning. You see what now soul is doing. But the whole thing started by the desire of the flesh. And the devil is what, that is the body, that desire for sex is that which uh, through the body is what the devil used to interfere with the soul of David. So, we are imagining of those things, desiring those things. I'll tell you, fight the flesh as you are fighting your greatest enemy. If your spirit, the greatest enemy of your spirit is your flesh. The Bible continues to say the heart of a man is so deceitful. In fact, the Bible continues to say that uh, guard your heart with all diligence because from it the issues of life arose. Your heart, which is part of the soul, the desires there. If the devil has now gotten over your body, if it has gotten hold of your body, the devil, it will push and it will speak, your body will speak and speak and speak and your soul will hear much of the body. And if the desires of the body are not that good, the deceitfulness of the heart you will see. It's so much deceitful. Praise the Lord. The heart is part of the soul. So, God is also interested with the heart of a man. My son, give me your heart. The devil is interested with your soul. Why? The devil is interested with your soul. God is interested with your soul. And the soul is only hearing the spirit and the body. The devil is using the body by the things that entices the body to corrupt the, the soul. And so God is using the spirit to speak to the soul. My son, give me your heart. The devil is also looking for that heart. Hallelujah. So if you don't kill the flesh, those two things cannot speak together. The body and the spirit speaking and uh, the soul wants to hear them both. Never. 
never it is not possible so your soul will hear your flesh or your spirit that is why we normally do what when somebody wants to uh men most men of god if uh, somebody has fallen into sin they'll put that man into they'll tell them go and pray and fast for 30 days if somebody has been found in sexual immorality go fast for 30 days by that fasting that man from that place say, i will have killed the flesh that desire in the flesh will go on will dry up prayer and fasting is not to hear god it is to kill the flesh so that the flesh does not speak as the spirit is speaking so the soul will always hear now the spirit god is always speaking with our spirit dropping things in our spirit but we don't hear them because our soul our flesh is speaking louder than our spirit and our soul tends to hear much of the flesh than the spirit so you have to crucify the spirit the flesh the way jesus crucified the flesh paul is saying i crucify myself daily i crucify my body i discipline i beat you must beat your body daily to that until it does not speak louder than your spirit the bible says, if you are if you have looked at a woman lustfully you have slept with her i thought how how by looking at a woman lustfully you have slept with her how i thought sleeping with her would have been you are physically sleeping with her you your body and the, the body of the other person are together conjoined you are having an intercourse yet the bible is telling if you look at a woman lustfully you have slept with her what does that mean how 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 does it if you have just looked at it the body has been the devil has used something a appetizer of the body and you have looked at that woman lustfully and now your soul your mind your desires have begun to be now the imagine of that now doing that sex the lustful things it is now now the the the, 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 the soul sinning do we see now how soul is sinning do we see how so our souls are sinning the body does not sin the body only sins when okay fine if you have the sexual intercourse and that body now hosts the holy spirit you have sinned against your own body that is where that body was so holy that the holy spirit the holy spirit does not stay in dirty places it stays in a clean place so when your body when you see the holy spirit staying in your place it is holy and when now you have begun doing the sexual intercourse uh, uh, you are now sinning against your own body but all these other sins you see them outside your body where do you, if you see them outside your where do you see them in in your soul not in your spirit in your soul not in your spirit not in your body now in your soul by sexual intercourse you are sinning against the body because that is the temple of the holy spirit but now by looking at a woman lustfully you are start imagining you are start having ideas of sex and all that you are now sinning you are now sinning i praise the lord do not covet why covet does not come from the body even though the devil will put the eye will see the ear will hear these appetizing things that is why you are being told do not conform to the standards of the world the world will deceive you this world is of the devil it will deceive you it will entice your flesh it will entice your body and you will miss out you will miss it you will miss out don't you listen to your body listen to the spirit crucify your body daily die daily praise the lord do not covet if you covet people covet by their soul we covet by our soul our mind our desire heart desires our intentions are in the heart intentions and the heart is part of the soul the soul is rest in the heart praise the lord our intentions our heart desires our thoughts do not covet by looking at that and you start now coveting you don't covet by your body now your heart you are you saw somebody doing so much so great and you are now jealous you are very envious and you feel like dying my friend that one work on your soul work on your heart your heart is part of your soul continuous sinning by your soul you'll end up in hell even though 
you received Christ Jesus, you are now not holy. Because now, by the desires of the heart, it will push the body to act and react. Praise the Lord. So, as I finish, work on your body. Kill the flesh. If you are to be very active in the reps of the spirit, your spirit to be active, kill the flesh. Crucify the flesh. Yes, Jesus Christ had died for us to save our soul. The listening, the perception, the intuition. Our soul is what Jesus died for. And we all know what our soul is. Our soul is our mind, our heart, our character, our desires. All these are part of the soul. All these are what Jesus died for. So allow God, allow the Spirit of God to transform your character, to transform your desire, to transform your mind, your thoughts, to be like that of Christ. And crucify daily the flesh and you will find yourself in heaven. God bless you, blessed people. Thank you.